I am a slightly chubby, unathletic woman who has never served a day in the military. But I started a company, and eventually we won the largest award ever to a woman-owned business in U.S. Special Operations Command Headquarters history. $200 million over five years for the worldwide support of the military training and exercise program with special operators, Navy SEALs, Green Berets, what they called door kickers. From there, we grew the company to $50 million in annual revenue, and within three years, to 100 million. How did I do that? Clearly not by being a door kicker. I had to be myself. Anything else, they would have seen right through me. So, not a door kicker, who am I then? Well, I am a recovering academic who has never officially used my PhD in psychology in a professional setting, although it does come in really handy both as a leader and particularly as the mom of teenagers. I am the former CEO and founder of WWC Global, I am the wife of the most supportive husband ever, the daughter of two aging parents, and the mom of two crazy hockey players, all of whom like to break themselves way too often. So we are frequent flyers at the emergency room of the healthcare system where I guess they figured I was there so often they might as well just put me on the board. All of that, it's my bio. And it's changed fairly substantially over the years. What hasn't changed is who I am, my core. Look, we all know people who are chameleons in social settings, so much so we never know who their true self really is. We also know people who take bring your whole self to work to an extreme and lay it all out there for everyone to see in every context and they lose credibility in the process. Let's call the balance between those two extremes thoughtful authenticity. Authenticity that keeps the core of you, but recognizes the social and professional context in which we all live and work. Thoughtful authenticity brings with it credibility, but also more meaningful relationships, stronger teams, better outcomes overall. In this hyper social media infused world, everyone seems to be pretending to be something they're not. They're filtered, they're airbrushed, they're stylized. Heck, in the case of AI and deep fakes, they might not even be a person. Anything real doesn't seem good enough anymore. On the other hand, authenticity is a major buzzword right now. So much so, that Merriam-Webster actually made it its word of the year for 2023. As in everything in life, the magic's in the balance. There are norms and expectations for how you show up in different settings and for different roles. You're not exactly the same person in every single interaction you have. And you certainly shouldn't be exactly the same person over time. You should be growing and maturing. You might be authentically a stereotypical frat boy in college. That might work well for you. Probably won't work nearly as well later on in life if you're trying to be a senior leader. You may never want to be an executive. That's OK. But the idea of executive presence, this idea that you recognize the context in which you're presenting yourself and modulate that presentation appropriately, that matters for everyone. And it's not in conflict with authenticity. As we were getting started in the firm, we were tiny. And I thought out loud a lot. And when it was two or five or 10 of us in the senior leadership team, it worked really well. But as we got much bigger, I started realizing that people took my thinking out loud as decision making. And I had to show up 
differently. It's not that I showed up inauthentically, but I had to show up as the still authentic leader they needed me to be at that time. Look, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am not what people expect to see when they hear former CEO of a very large military contracting firm. I flipped the script. And I think sometimes because of that, people end up calling me inspirational. And I got to tell you, every single time I hear this, all I can think about is the great and powerful Oz, right? But remember, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, because if you could see behind the curtain, if you could see to me screaming at my kids to get out of the house in the morning, or the two or three or four still yet to be unpacked suitcases in my closet right now, you wouldn't think I was so inspirational. But maybe that's the point. Maybe the inspiration is in the authenticity. I think it's imperative for leaders, all leaders, to say that, yes, I did this. Yes, it was hard. Yes, it is still hard. And here's how I did it. And maybe here's how you could do it differently. I almost never saw anyone do this as I was coming up in my professional career. And I think it made it harder for all of us. So beyond this idea of executive presence and showing behind the curtain, we're going to take two things from old school classic psychology. The first comes from a giant in the field named Elliot Aronson. And it's something he called the pratfall effect. Basically, he had this poor graduate student who was conducting an experiment, and they tripped and fell, hence pratfall. What impact did that fall have on estimations of things like their credibility, their likability? Well, it's psychology, so the answer is, of course, it depends. But what it depended most upon was whether or not that researcher had established their credibility before the fall or not. If they had, they were rated more positively on pretty much every variable they tested, even as compared to a researcher who hadn't fallen at all. But if they hadn't established that credibility up front, as my kids would say, they were just cringe. Wait a second. I started out this talk by calling myself chubby and unathletic. I violated this right up front, didn't I? Except I'm standing on a big red circle carpet with the TEDx sign right behind me, which established my credibility before I ever opened my mouth. Hopefully, my pratfall made me more approachable, more likable, more credible to you right up front. The second thing we're going to take from old school psychology is another giant in the field, Bob Cialdini, and something he called credible authority. It's just a fancy term for the positive outcomes you get from owning up to your mistakes, your weaknesses, before somebody else can discover them for themselves. Let me give you an example from when we got our really big contract. And let me back up for a second and tell you that people were mad and I mean really, like really mad that chicks got the contract. And the, the thing is, we had to get buy-in, though, from the guys, the former door kickers, who were on the contract in order to succeed. And we didn't know how they were going to take to working for chicks with no military operational experience. So we invited everyone to a happy hour, Everything is better with food and drink, at least. Borrowing from those concepts that we had of the pratfall effect, we brought a bunch of credibility builders with us, retired generals, such that would vouch for us, that believed in us. But more than that, I just walked around to every single person there. And leveraging my own credible authority, I admitted that, hey, look, I'm very clearly not a door kicker probably couldn't kick in a door to save my life. 
I respect you and everything you've done, but I don't have to have done that to do this. And then I told them what I was instead, which was a darn good leader of a darn good firm. Guess what? They bought in. They believed in us. They respected what we brought to the table. And honestly, I think they realized that even though we weren't physically door kickers, if we were here and we needed to get there, they knew we were getting through that door or that window or that brick wall somehow, some way. So for thoughtful authenticity, four things to remember. Bring your executive presence. Recognize the context in which you're presenting yourself and modulate that presentation effectively. Show behind the curtain, absolutely, but balance the mess with the inspiration. Remember the pratfall effect and lead with your credibility first. And leverage your own credible authority to admit your mistakes, your weaknesses, before somebody else can discover them. Oh, and one last thing. If you're authentically a jerk, maybe work on that before you start working on thoughtful authenticity. <laughs> authenticity doesn't give you a pass for bad behavior. Thoughtful authenticity, authenticity done right, can be an absolute superpower. Take it from a chubby, unathletic, military contracting success story. Thank you. Thank you.